Well, good morning. Welcome to Creek Sand today. So good to see you here. And if you're watching online on our live stream, today is our first day on YouTube. So uh, uh, I told you last week we were going to YouTube, and you can help us out with that by going to YouTube and subscribing. It's very easy. I just helped someone do it after the last service on their phone. Just find Creek Sand YouTube, subscribe to it. We need at least 100 subscribers to keep going what we're doing. And what you can do is go out there and see videos, not only the messages, but VBS videos and camp videos and all the stuff that we put out. Uh, that's where we're going to put it. So you might even have a message from me there every now and then. So take a look at it, subscribe to it, help us out. Appreciate that. If you're watching online, welcome as well. We're in a brand new series today. Been looking forward to this. It's our team series. Uh, if you're not, uh, hadn't been to Creek Sand uh, in the last year or so, you know we do this every year. We take turns with our teaching pastors, and uh, I really love it because I get a break. But you get to hear and know our other teaching staff better. And so Josh, our student pastor, and Jesse, our discipleship pastor, and Tim, our community pastor, and Wade, our young adult pastor, and myself are going to tag team this. And I'm going to start it out today and uh, kind of introduce the series and then they're, each week they're going to be looking in the book of Proverbs for uh, some wisdom that we can, can grab onto. Back when I was in college is when I really discovered the book of Proverbs for the first time. I mean, I knew it existed, but I hadn't read too much of it. And I had a, a, a mentor in college tell me that, you know, if you really want wisdom and you're a college student, you need all the wisdom you can get, Right. He said, you should go and read the book of Proverbs. And he said, what I would suggest is that once a semester, you take one month out of that semester and read the book of Proverbs. And here's how you do it. There are 31 chapters, one for every day of the month. So he said, take it and read one chapter a day for a month. Do that once every semester. And you know what? I did that. And I really got to learn a lot about wisdom and making some you know, good decisions. And so if you're not in the habit of a daily quiet time, I would suggest you do the same thing. It's a great place to start. Take a month and just every day read a chapter of Proverbs. And I guarantee you, no matter how many times you read it, you'll learn new things. I, just reading this uh, for this series, I learned some new things that I had not known or I had forgotten about. And so there's lots and lots of very practical wisdom to be found. Using Proverbs is one of the most ancient ways of trying to teach people wisdom and how to succeed at life. And one of the wisest men who ever lived, King Solomon, wrote most of these proverbs that we're going to be uh, teaching. And of course, we're only covering five weeks. And let me just say this, I'm going to be at the front end and then I'm going to come back at the back end and, uh, and do a closing message. But here's what you need to know about that message. When I'm done with that message, in one week later, the Texans will begin their run to the Super Bowl. All right? So you have that to look forward to, right? And hard to believe that it's almost here, right? School starts in, in two or three weeks, and some parents are going, yay! And the kids are going, ooh, but that's okay. I, I, I'm, I feel for you, parents. I know your pain. Um, when, when we talk about the book of Proverbs, we're talking about little statements that give us some meaning and some wisdom about life. In, in Hebrew, there's a word for Proverbs called Mishle. Mishle. Say that with me. Mishle. Now I can tell your friends and coworkers you know a Hebrew word, right? Mishle means to be like. And in, in the Proverbs, what you're going to have is very, a, a whole lot of comparisons of this is what it is to be like, to be wise. And so we're going to look at these Proverbs. Uh, each one of us are going to take uh, some verses and kind of just let's learn about what God has to say about making wise choices and, and, and being wise in all the areas of our life. There's a verse that we kind of springboarded off of. I'm going to put it on the screen. I think it's in your notes at the top of your notes there, but it's where we get the title for our series. It's from the 24th verse of the first chapter, and what Solomon does is he personifies wisdom. He, he treats wisdom like a person. And so wisdom is speaking here, and it's talking to us, saying this, you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand. That's wisdom talking to us. And that's where we get the, the pay attention title for our series, because I don't know if it's, maybe we're born with it, but I think we're, we have the tendency from the day we're born to ignore wisdom. 
Think about it. Your parent, maybe you have small children, and you have some great nuggets of wisdom for those children, like don't touch the hot stove. And what do they do? I think it's inbred in them to ignore it. You don't know what you're talking about, adult. So I'll touch the hot stove. Or don't put your finger in the light socket. You know, wouldn't it great when they came along with those things that you could plug into the light, to the electrical sockets, except when your kid brings you that thing? You know, it's like, what's this, mom? What's it doing in there? But the wisdom that it takes to say things like that, don't do that. We have the tendency to ignore it. And it goes into the adolescent period. We ignore wisdom as teenagers. And then that carries on into adulthood. It's just in a different way. We have this tendency to ignore wisdom. And God calls us, if we're believers, to wisdom, to learn wisdom, to practice wisdom. And he wants the best for us, just like a a parent would for his child. And in the Proverbs, you're going to see Solomon coming from the angle of a father to a son or from a parent to a child saying, I'm just telling you, I can help you out here if you'll just listen to me. Here's some wisdom for you. And we're going we're gonna to look at it kind of in that context. Today we're going to be in Proverbs 2. And uh, as we dig into this book, let me give you the overarching truth. that's going to apply to today and to the rest of this series as well. But here's the main thing I want you to know. In order to get wisdom, there are conditions that must be met. So pay attention. You've got to meet some conditions if you want godly wisdom. Now, now God, God's word says this in the New Testament. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And that's true. If you want wisdom, God says, ask me. But asking is not enough. You have to receive it to get it. And there are conditions, according to the book of Proverbs, that we have to meet in order to acquire this wisdom that God so wants to bestow upon us. Now, Proverbs 2 is naturally divided into three sections, and today's message is going to be really, really practical. I don't think I can get any more practical than what I'm going to do today in this this book. It's so easily laid out like this in three sections, and thus the title of the message, If, For, and Then. So we're going to read the first 15 verses because that's all we have time to read today. And then I'm going to go back and we're going to take each section and talk about it, okay? Uh, Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 2. My son, and here's that parent-child relationship. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Now let's go back and let's take the, each section a section at a time. We're going to talk about first the if section, okay? The, the if section, if is, is conditional, and it includes some conditional challenges similar to what a parent might say to a child. If you eat your vegetables, then you can go play. If you do your chores, then you can play video games. So if is kind of conditional here. If you do this, then you can do this. And God is very similar in the way he treats us as believers. If you'll do this, then we can can see some results, okay? So the first section, Solomon gives us three conditions. And I hope you're taking notes because this is so practical and helpful. If you need wisdom right now in your life for something that's going on in some area of your life, you need some wisdom to make the right choice, make the right decision, listen to what we have to say today. God has something to say to you. 
Look at verse 1. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, and that word accept, accept my words, means to yield or surrender to his words. And we're talking about God's word here. So the first step, the first condition that is that we have to surrender and accept. So we say, if we will accept God's word, that's one condition. That's the first condition. Surrender our selfish ways, learn to deny our selfish inclinations. When a soldier surrenders, they stop fighting. When a soldier surrenders, they stop fighting. In the wars between Athens and Sparta, you remember reading about that, or maybe you saw the movie 300 a few years ago where, where we talked about Sparta, and, and uh, Athens always had the large number of soldiers. Sparta had always had the well-disciplined, self-denying soldiers, well-trained. And we, in fact, we get uh, from the word Sparta, it means disciplined or devoted. And so... Uh, when the Athenians had them surrounded, the, the captain of the Athenian army sent them a note. And he said this, this is what the note said. If we capture your city, we will burn your homes, rape your women, and destroy every one of you. And the captain of the Spartan army took that note and he read it to his men, which was probably the best halftime speech he could have given them. Because he then wrote a note back to the Athenian captain, and it had one word on it, if, if. And God gives us a note today to say, look, if you will do this, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to. I'm not like that. I don't force my way on you. You have a free will. But if you'll do this, some great things are going to happen. So if you will accept God's word, surrender to what it says, then verse 2, look at what it says. Turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. And the word turning here means to move toward. In other words, the second step is if we move toward God's word. First, we, we, we accept it. We surrender to it. Then we move toward it. See, it's not enough to accept it. We have to turn toward it. When someone's speaking to you, do you walk away or do you, just, or do you turn and face them when they're talking to you? Now, the polite thing to do is when someone's talking to you is to face them, right, and, and, and look at them while they're talking to you. When you need wisdom, where are you turning first? Where do you turn first? Do you turn toward God's word or do you turn toward something else? Do you turn towards God's word or do you turn toward Dr. Phil? Do you turn toward God's word or do you turn to Oprah? Do you turn toward God's word or do you turn to a self-help book? Do you turn toward God's word or do you turn to your own thoughts and ways? See, who do you turn to? And, and Solomon's trying to tell us we have to turn toward God's word. And even more, the rest of verse 2, look at what it says. And applying your heart to understanding. And the word apply here actually in Hebrew means to bend. In other words, we bend our lifestyle to God's word. That's a third condition. In other words, we have to apply God's word. We have to bend our lifestyle to match God's word. I see this all the time, but I see people trying to bend God's word to fit their lifestyle time and again. But God says, no, you've got to bend your life to fit my word. That's what applying it means. So those are the three conditions. That's the if section. If you will accept my word, accept God's word, then if you will move toward it, move toward it, and then apply it. Bend your lifestyle to match it. If, then we have the for section. And for is a term of reason. It's similar to because or what. Now, something else we carry with us, I think, into adulthood is the same thing our kids ask us when we tell them we want them to do something. They say, why? And our standard answer is, because I said so. Yeah, see, you're, no, you're doing no different than the first service. They got it right off the bat. Because I said so, right? Okay? 
Well, God goes a little bit further than because I said so. And he really gives us why. These are the conditions. If you will do these things, this is why I want you to do these things. So this is the fourth section. Look at verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And God says, I want you to accept my word, move toward my word, apply my word because, and here's the first four, for you will get understanding. After we meet God's conditions, we'll get understanding, knowledge, wisdom, he says. See, there's a lot of great things that Christ followers get when we receive Christ. We get forgiveness for our sins. We get to go to heaven. We get a new nature. But in this proverb, God promises to give wisdom on how to live. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Some of us have messed up our life, but God will make us wise if we will listen to him. Let him tell us how to live. If you will meet the conditions, you'll get the understanding. But that's not all. Look at verse 8. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. And this is interesting. And, and this is one of the things that I learned after reading it after so many years. That word faithful ones, circle that. Because that word faithful ones, when you translate it into the English, it's the word saints. In the Old Testament, a saint meant that you were a favored one. When you were a saint in the Old Testament, God looked after you. He blessed you in the land of Israel. He showered his favors upon you. And guess what? God says, if you will meet my conditions, I will bless you. That's what I want you to do. I want you to do it for I will bless you. The message is clear. If you obey the words of God, you become his favored one, and he will shower his blessings on you. So three conditions, accept his word, move toward his word, apply his word because you'll get understanding, because I'm going to bless you. But it doesn't end there. Those are great in and of themselves. But then we bring, it brings us to the then section. And then deals with results. Here's what's going to happen. Here are the reasons I want you to obey but here's what's going to happen when you do obey. Look at verse 9. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair. Every good path. And here's how I would say it. If you meet God's conditions, you apply, you accept, you move toward, if you'll meet my conditions, then the light goes on. That's how I would say it. Then the light goes on. You get that aha moment. You'll, you'll understand what's right and just and fair. You'll understand the right thing to do. You'll understand the right decision to make. I remember one of my professors in college saying that Christianity is rational. And by that, he meant that God always begins with our mind, our intellect. God wants his people to understand why they're obeying. And so, you know, most foreign religions, all they want is obedience. They want you to adhere to a, to a principle or a commandment. But God says, no, here's why I want you to do this. Here's why I want you to obey my commands. Here's why. God is, is, is someone who, who his, our experience with him involves our total being, our intellect, our emotions, and our will. Our intellect, our emotions, and our will. See, first, God wants you to know that he's God. God wants you to know you're a sinner. God wants you to know Christ died for you. God wants you to know that you need to follow him. See, that's great, but that's not enough to save you. Just the knowledge, the intellect. We also have to have emotion. It involves feeling. We have to feel guilt for our sin. We have to feel sorrow for our sin. We have to feel love for God. But then our will is involved. 
And we have to make a choice. We have to decide, yes or no, am I going to do this? Am I going to accept this? So it involves it all. And if you meet God's conditions, the light goes on. It all begins to make sense. Oh, that's why you said not to do that. That's why you said I shouldn't get into debt. That's why you said that. So we get the light coming on. We understand what's right and what's wrong. But not only does the light go on, there's something else important behind the conditions. Look at verses 10 through 15 again. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you. Understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men. From men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Now, did you notice he said things like, wisdom will protect you. Understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you. And this is the other then. Then God will protect you. Then we will be under God's protection. Those who follow God's conditions fall, fall under God's protection. But let me say this, the opposite is also true. If you ignore God's conditions, then you are not under God's protection. Do you know why? Because basically when you ignore his commands, when you ignore his conditions, you're basically saying, God, I'm smarter than you. I don't need you. And so God will say, okay, you do what you want but I'm not obligated to protect you because you refuse to listen to me. We fall under his protection when we meet the conditions, accept his word, move toward his word, apply his word, then I can protect you. I can protect you from making bad decisions. I can protect you from hanging around with the wrong crowd. I can protect you from going into debt I can protect you from dating or marrying the wrong person if you'll meet my conditions. So there you have it. There are conditions that we have to meet in order to acquire godly wisdom. And God says, if you'll do this, this is what you get. Now, here's the deal. How do you apply this? How do you apply this? And here's the best way I know to do it. Let's just think about what we just heard and take a situation and apply it. Let's just start with finances. Every week on our connection card, someone asks us to pray for their finances. And I, that's great because they're beginning to understand that God wants me to be wise with my finances. And it's a great thing to do to invite God into your finances, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you want to be blessed. And we pray for you. And pray with you. But if we take what we just learned, which says, if we meet his conditions, which are accept his word, move our lifestyle toward his word, apply his word, here's how, what that looks like. Finances. God, how do, I, how do I do finances? Look at what my word says about finances, God will say. And his word is full of things. Honor God with the first fruits. His word says, talks about giving. His word talks about saving. His word talks about getting into debt. All of those things are covered in his word. But you have to listen to it, accept it, and then move your lifestyle toward it. If you do, then God will bless your finances. If you do, God will protect you from, from debt. It's all conditional. But you have to do it. Does that make sense? Is that, that's how you apply this. As you look at what his word says, move your lifestyle toward it, and then God says, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to protect you. It's that simple. And by the way, if you are dealing with some financial struggles, this September 5th, we begin another session of financial peace. It is a wonderful thing. Many people have gone through that and felt just like some of you felt and have been able to get out of debt doesn't happen overnight, does it? But it can be done, and God will bless and protect your finances.
Let's take another area. Let's take the area of relationships. Maybe you're struggling with uh, some dating issues or, or, or a spouse or even a relationship at work or someone you love, a son, daughter, parent, whatever. And you're saying, God, what, what should I do about this? Well, we take his word. Take everything that God has to say about relationships. And he has a lot to say about relationships. He says, bad company corrupts good character. He says, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. He says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. He says, no greater love than a man has than to lay down his life for a friend. He says, you need to guard your heart and be faithful to your spouse. He says, all of those things in his word. What do we have to do? We have to accept it, move our life toward it, bend our lifestyle to apply it. And if we do, God says, I will bless your relationships and I will protect you. It's, it's not real hard until we just have to do it. One more area. Let's take your career. Maybe you're in a position now where you just don't like your job anymore. You're wondering if you'll ever get to move up. Maybe you're looking for another job. Maybe you're just struggling with a coworker or your boss or an employer or whatever. And you say, God, what do I need to do about this? God's word has a lot to say about the work, the work situation. He talks about managers, how being good managers. He talks about the relationship between employee and employer and how that needs to be. And then he talks about relationships with other workers. And then he talks about doing your work as you're working, just as if you're working for the Lord. He also has a lot to say about business ethics. That's his word. Now what do we do? We accept it. We move toward it. We apply it. And God says, okay, now I can bless you. Now I can protect you. We just have to meet his conditions. I don't care what area of life you're struggling with, your physical health, even just your walk with God. If you will take his word, apply it, move your lifestyle toward it, God says, I'm ready to do what you want me to do, and that's bless and protect you. But you've got to meet the conditions. So the question is for us as we leave today is, am I willing to do that? Am I willing to meet God's conditions in order to acquire godly wisdom, or am I going to leave this place and just keep on messing up and keep on messing up and keep on messing up? My prayer is that you'll listen to what God has to say to you today about wisdom because he's calling all of us to wisdom and do the wise thing and bend toward him today.